Okay, with that in mind, let's jump over to our man, Tim Ward. Folks, we talk to Tim every Tuesday and Thursday on my dad's program. Um, and you can check out Tim at the Ord hyphen oracle.com that's his website check it out please uh always interested in this one tim ward quite a day to have you on man good afternoon great how you doing i'm so, doing well uh, you know i was listening to your program when you were talking to my dad tim on tuesday and boy you guys sounded pretty bullish man i remember you saying maybe this thing carries through to august and boy we got quite a head start um, I'm pulling up your charts right now, Tim. Just give me one second. But boy, what do, what do you what do you think of this market, man? As we're accelerating, I know you love looking at some ratios or everything. But boy, we got some movement today, Tim. Right. Uh, actually, just look at chart one, which is the okay. uh, it's a monthly um, SPX, and I did a Bollinger Band on it. You can go back farther as you want, but uh, what I want to point out here is the times. When 50, uh, actually month end is a week from today, so we haven't hit month end yet. But anyhow, if it closes here or higher, it could be actually a short term trouble for the market. The reason why is because when the uh, S and P, I did this as it's, it's the uh, candlestick charting, and when the candle closes above fifty percent. Uh, you know, uh, between the high and low of the candle, that candle closes a fifty percent above the upper Bollinger Band. Usually, you get a consolidation, and I mark the times on the chart there. The times when uh, the the candle was more than fifty or fifty percent or more above the upper Bollinger Band. And right now, it's kind of probably the chart may be kind of hard to see. No, we right got now, it up there. We're above yep. the fifty percent mark. So, and I can um, and I can kind of see how it's peaking above that line. I can, yeah. Yeah, but you want it. It can actually peak above it. You, you know, you can be ten percent above it, twenty percent above it. But when it gets above fifty percent, that's when you can have trouble, and that's where we are right now. So, actually, the most bullish thing you can have is for the market to back off right now. If it closes here, chances are then you're going to have a consolidation because the probabilities are pretty high at. At worst case, you go sideways, uh, and you know. I guess, or the the best case, you go sideways. The worst case, it could, it could come in like uh, of uh, what is that February of two thousand twenty, where you had the COVID crash. But I don't think that's anything happening here. What I do think is, is probably four month in, which is a week from today, the market may just back off here. Not a lot, but a little bit, and uh, do a mild consolidation because I'm thinking what's, what's going on here is is the market's up too fast, too quick on a short term basis. And if you flip to, um, uh, let's see if I did that chart three, we might skip ahead here a little bit. You got it, whatever you want. And it is interesting yeah, as you get chart. that. Yeah. Go ahead, which one? Yeah, it, yeah, go to chart three real quick. Okay. I was just going to mention that, you know, even before you came on the air, right, I was saying maybe we're going to consolidation. I'm sure you heard me because, boy, it's just been quite a run, man, from 4,100 up to 5,100 over the span of three months. Um, but go ahead. We got chart three up here. We're looking at it for the SPY. Right. What I'm thinking here is probably three drives to the top pattern. And actually, when I made this chart, the market's actually higher now. Uh, you don't have a... a if you can't really see it, but the, uh, we're even on the daily. We're fifty percent above the uh, the upper Bollinger Band, which kind of uh, leaves a little bit kind of a you know the week. I didn't see the, the weekly is okay, but the monthly and daily are both above the upper Bollinger Band. And also, if you go down uh, the second window up from the bottom, you got the S P S hitting a higher high, and you got the VIX making a higher low. And that's usually not a good sign either. So this this rally is not perfect. Normally, you get uh, disbelief when the rally starts occurring, and you got a lot of believers in this market right now. I still think uh, at some point we're going to pull back down to the selling climax uh, on this chart, which is January or no February thirteenth, which was uh, last Tuesday. And I think we're going to still pull back down there one more time. Then get the rally, the real rally, going from there. So, you know, either way, we're going to go up. Uh, what I'm saying is, we may see a, a short-term consolidation pullback, possibly roll all, all the way back to 490 on the SPY. Probably find support there. Uh, then start the next leg up. 
so it's that's pretty remarkable. Kind of seeing and I agree, sure and I love what you're. I agree, I love what you're saying. Um, it's pretty remarkable in terms of that we just trade up from 4100 to 5100, and that might not even be the real rally, right? But I love it. Hang with us, okay, Tim? We'll be right back. Um, All right. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man Tim Ward. Don't go away. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's up 103 points right now. That's a rise of about. 2%, NASDAQ 100 up about 3%, the Dow up an even 1.1%. We're talking to our man, Tim Ord. We're talking markets. And uh, let's continue that conversation. Tim, where are we going to uh, Well, so go. I'm thinking uh, this pattern, since on a monthly time frame, you're above the mid-Bollinger Band by 50%. The daily, you're above the uh, upper Bollinger Band, rather, by 50%. I think the pattern that's forming here, it's a little bit hard to see, but I'm I'm thinking it's three drives to a top. We're in the third top right now. A three drives to a top pattern have a downside target where the pattern began. Well, the pattern began on uh, January 30th, uh, January uh, 13th, I think it was, which is the selling climax day, and that's back down to 490. So I'm thinking it's just kind of a shakeout, uh, sure. especially with with the market touching new highs. The VIX is not even below the previous high. Uh, if you look at the, you know, so the VIX should actually really be plummeting here. And actually, when both markets gapped up, the VIX actually moved higher, or, or the S&P's gapped up, and the VIX gapped down, but the S&P's moved higher, and actually the VIX also moved higher from its open. Uh, so it's kind of an unusual situation, so I'm not, you know, I could be wrong, but I'm not really trusting uh, this rally. Let's flip to chart two real quick. It's a great point. Just I had the VIX up, and I was noticing that myself. Not often do you see. I mean, just even you just look at that chart, man. Fourteen fifty right now. That is above many days on that S and P um, in terms of where we are. Meanwhile, we got the S and P's at fifty one hundred. So worth noting for sure. Yeah, uh, it, I'm it's, sorry. It's, uh, yeah. So it's, it's nothing real, real bearish. I mean, not all candidate yeah. indicators work all the time, but sure. you get enough of them uh, saying that you know maybe not, you know not chase this rally, then uh, sure. you could be wrong. Maybe. We'll have to, you know, if that turns out to be the case, I'll have to get in later. But here's yeah, another looks like chart that kind of warns me. Uh, uh, what chart, chart is that, number, number two. four? Two, okay. Yeah. I got it up. Go for yeah, it. You, all right. It's the SPX tilt ratio, which is the second window down from the top. When gotcha. the RSI 10 of this uh, ratio gets above 75, when I sent you this chart, it was 74.27. Normally, you can get a short-term consolidation. That's where those blue lines are. When the RSI gets down below 30, usually you're at a low. So you got two things here, two methods unrelated to each other. They kind of say the market is extended. You know, can these indicators fail? Yeah, possibly. But uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of wait and see what uh, what, what it brings here. Uh, if we're still holding these highs you know, the next couple of days, I'd be saying, well, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to get pulled back here, especially on the monthly chart. If you flip back to chart number one, uh, you know, uh, if you can yep. pull that chart it up. up real Go quick. It. Yep. It's, it's, if you get 50, it's pretty rare. You know, this chart goes back to, to uh, 2015, so uh, it, it doesn't get there very often when the uh, – uh, S and P's are above fifty percent above the upper Bollinger Band, but when it does, it's usually a, a accurate signal. So the most bullish thing it can do is actually back off here uh, over the next uh, well until next Thursday, and that would actually open the door for this rally to continue. So right now, because of you running into the upper Bollinger Band, you're fifty percent above. The market's gone up too quick, too fast. Uh, sure. So it, it's kind of like a stretched rubber band. So I'm, I'm thinking minor pullback, nothing real significant. Uh, you, you get kind of a sideways move, go back to 490. I think that's where it sets up the next rally. So we'll be nice. talking next Tuesday again to see if I'm right or wrong. Who knows where but, we'll uh, be by that's then. What that's I see, right. Uh, on a short term for the, for the S&Ps. Nice. Um, we, we can flip to the, if you have questions, or we can go on to the No, this market. is great, man. Let's just keep rocking for sure. You want me to go to chart five? Uh, chart four. Chart four, excuse me. Okay, we got four up there. Right. Here's, uh, you got something. Uh, this is, uh, I always kind of look at the bigger time frames first, then go down from there. 
uh, and this is the uh, inflation deflation ratio, and the top window is the RSI for this ratio. When the RSI okay. gets down around 30 on this ratio, it kind of means exhaustion moved to the downside. And uh, this chart goes back quite a ways uh, in about mid 2014 and shows all the times, the blue line show all the times when this ratio um, RSI got below uh, 30. And they all pretty much marked, you know, significant lows. And uh, we're actually we're going to go back and forth between chart four, and chart five. The reason why okay. I do that, we got them both up. Go for uh, it, easy enough, for sure. Yeah. So chart because chart five is is a different yep. method, and the reason why I'm kind of going back and forth, it kind of tells a story here. Chart five, the bottom window, is the 50 day average of the up down volume percent for GDX. And when it gets below minus 20, which is all the circles, that's the bottom, the bottom indicator or the bottom window. And yep. all the red circles are times when that indicator got below uh, minus 20. The big uh, bold circles are times when the, uh, go back to chart four, are times when the uh, Inflation deflation ratio RSI also got below 30. So okay. I, I matched those times up, two different methods. And so both of them say you're at a low here, but what it does suggest that this low is probably an intermediate term low, but it's probably going to go sideways for several months. So that's the bad news. But it's the good news you're at a low. The bad news you're not going to rally here right away. It may take. Yeah. You know, maybe, you know, April, May, June, July, I don't know. But your at a low is probably just going to mill around, really go nowhere. But once the rally does start, uh, if you look on on uh, chapter page five again, those yep. are multi-month rallies. You know, sometimes they can last even longer than that. So a big rally is coming, but you're going to go sideways over here for probably the next several months. And that's the bad okay. news. So uh, the previous rallies, you know, can last a couple of months. So the next rally is probably going to be at least six months. But it may not start until J July or, or, I don't know, maybe May. I'm not sure. Seasonality-wise, gold is, is a lot of times make highs and lows in July. So I'm thinking, in my point of view, it could be July before this rally gets going. So sure. uh, we're at a low, but it's not going to go anywhere. So patience, you know, it would I make sense. What I'm telling my customers. It's a pretty reasonable position, you know, back to the market and with gold as well. But to say, you know, maybe we digest things, <clears throat> excuse me, for, for, you know, a small period of time with the run that we've had. And, you know, you cap it off with, with quite an exclamation point today right now. We, you know, we got, I'm sure your S&P is 1%, NASDAQ 100, 3%, Dow 1, um, excuse me, S&Ps are 2%, Dow's up 1%, NASDAQ 100 up 3%. Um, not exactly, you know. A blow off, but but it seems like it's a reasonable position that at some point we give a little pause. And if it's only two days and I'm listening to you on Tuesday and, and <laughs> that's the pause, then watch out for this market, man. It's pretty remarkable. Right. Um, but I was so, enjoying what you were okay. talking about on, on Tuesday of this week, man. And, and here we are, um, dramatically higher yet again as we push higher. So it's pretty remarkable. Tim, I appreciate right. the time as always, man. Always a pleasure talking to you folks. Remember, you can check out Tim's work at Ord oracle.com. We talk to Tim every Tuesday and Thursday right here on the program. And uh, we look forward to talking to you on Tuesday, Tim. Have a great one, man. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me Thank on. Thank you.